power of sun. She could walk on water. Vivek, are you a, a, can you unmute? Are you able to unmute? You're not un, un, can't unmute because you're on mute. Um, uh, if you can chat. Could you? Hi, I'm in, guys. Thanks. Hi. I was sending hi. You can hear, no? Okay, we can hear you. So now let's not mute. Let's just stay unmuted. <laughs> I wasn't being allowed to unmute for some reason. Yeah, I think it's just some settings, and um, and now I think now let's not un let's not mute Paul. You know, we let we will not uh, get back on the horse otherwise. Hi, Chitral, lovely to see you. Hi, Chitna. Hi, Snigna, lovely to see you. How are you guys doing? Put on chat as you normally do. So I know y'all are here, y'all are alert, and y'all can hear me. Hi. So you know the drill, you can post your questions. So uh, whenever we're going through it, so your questions will be answered. <laughs> So welcome everyone to our episode of the Explore series. And today we have a very, very exciting episode ahead. And that is because we're going to be speaking to somebody who I really consider someone who has understood the world of sport, not only understood the world of sport, has uh, really managed to transform the world of sport into uh, an avenue to transform the world. And I'm not going to be saying it very lightly, yet I think this is very important for me to state right at the outset. Before we begin our uh, conversation, which I am uh, really, I, I can't tell you how excited about this on a personal level, I really want to take an opportunity to welcome all of you. Uh, you've taken this moment to come, you've taken this moment to explore. And uh, today we talk about running, and we're talking about Run India Run, right? And we're to actually talking about the marathon. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an entire broadcast that's brought to you by Jagran Lake City University and Disrupt Mime. And together, we have embarked on a uh, lovely partnership, and the partnership is that of media studies. We bring to you Jagran Wiscroft Mime School of Entertainment and Events, and we're offering courses, BA honors and MA, with a perspective to enable you to grow in your career if you're looking at experiential studies as an avenue to grow in the industry and to grow the country as a whole. 
And in these Explore series, we have been talking to various industry leaders and more than industry leaders. Let me talk uh, about them as people who have really created value for both the world as well as for India. And today is one such uh, phenomenal, I would say phenomenal gentleman. So I'm going to take just a moment to introduce you to Vivek Singh. Welcome, Vivek. I'm going to uh, really uh, introduce you with all my heart. <laughs> so you I always I have... do everything with all your heart, Sushma. That's your beauty and charm. And it's so <laughs> lovely so... being here. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, Vivek is the joint MD of uh, ProCam International. And ProCam has been in existence since 1988. They have been at the company behind all the top marathons. Uh, and the top marathon, one of the top 10 marathons of the world is what we know as the Tata Mumbai Marathon. And uh, Airtel Delhi Half Marathon, amazing. And the Tata Consultancy Services World uh, 10K in Bangalore, as well as the Tata Steel Kolkata 25K. These are some of the running events in the world today. And those have been nurtured and created and uh, instrumented by none other than ProCam. And the amazing part about Vivek, I must tell you, is that they've not stopped at that. Uh, they actually broke new ground and uh, with an absolutely unprecedented, I would call it, an unparalleled initiative. And that was the Nexup P1 Powerboat Grand Prix of the Seas. Can you imagine? I think uh, that was uh, a little before its time, right? Uh, now I think the time would be now. Yet that being said, it was highly successful and it was conducted in Mumbai. And I must tell you, uh, Marine Drive was absolutely buzzing at that point. I remember that because it hosted the best drivers and navigators racing P1 Panther boats inside a specially constructed race course on the water. Can you imagine this right on the shore of what we call Mumbai? And uh, uh, ProCam has also been uh, involved in sports consultancy, live television production, and player endorsement. And uh, uh, Vivek has been a graduate of, econo uh, of economics. That's something we share in common, uh, Vivek, from the Mumbai University. And his business sense, his eye for detail, and hands-on approach makes him one of the most respected leaders in our industry today. Now, that being said, that is the written document. Now, let me introduce you to Vivek Singh uh, with a personal story. So this was in 2001, okay, guys? And I was sitting in a boardroom in uh, Tata, and I was a consultant with the Tata Group. My company was Ice Global. And then we were sitting there, and uh, there was a meeting plan. And there were these two gentlemen who came in, and the names were Vivek Singh and Anil Singh. 2001. I remember the one thing I remember was their eyes were sparkling with excitement and they were there to explain about how they are bringing the very first marathon that is a running event to India. They've created it, they're going to run with it literally and they're going to put Mumbai on a map. Moreover, I'll tell you what excited me was their vision. Their vision, I'm talking 2001, huh, everyone, that's 20 years ago, was to integrate running into an important and noticeable sport. But the other thing is to actually influence India into getting fitter. And number three, which was very important to me, is to actually drive CSR through a sporting event. And that is what they dreamed of in 2001. Of course, that didn't go through for whatever reason. I, I would call it the Tata's loss at that point of time. <laughs> and uh, I was so amazed and so excited when finally the marathon really became a reality. And I was even more excited when I saw roads being cordoned off and the entire city literally captive and held seat by these bunch of amazing runners taking on the seat. And that's when the marathon exploded. I don't think it, uh, I think it exploded from stage zero, if I'm not mistaken, really. Uh, it has grown to be an institution. It has grown to be um, something that we all look forward to, something that we have missed as Mumbai cars. But forget Mumbai cars, it has grown to be um, an event that has made its mark on the world. Imagine one of the top 10 running events in the world. 
So that is my little personal story that I wanted to share with all you students. And with that being said, I'm going to be talking not at all, except asking the question. So welcome, Vivek, over to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Sushma. Pleasure. And I think such a wonderful initiative by Wiscraft Mind. I think your students are lucky to have the kind of brain power, intellect, and people you bring to the table. So hats off to you all. Also to people like Jagran Lake City University for partnering you all. I think it's absolutely wonderful. You know, there's so much that needs to be shared, imparted, and taught in the world of media, events, entertainment, sports. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much, Vivek. So now you're in the hot seat. Now I get to ask you all the questions that I, as well as our students and the viewers watching beyond this room, get to actually get answered. So question number one, like I said, this was a dream in 2001. Of course, you've been around since 1988. Could you tell us what stimulated the dream? What was it that stimulated your dream? There has to be some point that you said, you know what, this is the event we want to do. So what stimulated the dream and moving right into, did you have this vision? Did you en envisage the dream to become this big? So these are my first two right off the bat question. You know, they're very good questions, Sushma. So first of all, if you're dreaming about an event, then you think in a particular way. But if you're dreaming about a movement, then you have to think in a different way. And for Anil and for me, Mumbai Marathon, it was called the Mumbai International Marathon for the first couple of years, was never about creating an event and how much are we going to make from it, how are we going to do it. It was creating social change at a macro level. And I say this with all sincerity, though it's easy to say it now when you have 2020 vision and 2020, but you're saying it all because we put five pillars on the ground, five pillars that nobody could have imagined. Pillar one, we said whatever we do should bring pride and prestige to the host city and to the host country, which is Mumbai, India. Pillar two, communal harmony. Now, who sets about doing an event with communal harmony as one of its pillars? It's impossible. So I'm just trying to tell you, and these five pillars were set in 20, 2001 and then finally fructified in 2003 when we launched it and 2004 when we delivered it. So I'm just trying to build a little distinction here between a thought process of an event, a movement, and what it entails. So we put the second pillar called communal harmony. We put the third pillar down called health and fitness. The fourth pillar, charity. And the fifth was a boon to Indian athletics. Now, the truth is none of these were pillars. I'd like to call them pillars today. They were seeds. Small seeds which we just sowed into the ground and we hoped they would blossom. 20 years later, something we've not seen, pride and prestige, it's well recorded. Communal harmony, it has been a beacon for communal harmony. Charity, what people do not, many people do not know, the largest sporting charity platform in India is the Mumbai Marathon. And the other three marathons that ProCam does constitute the largest charity sporting paradigm of sport. And I'm including IPL, ISL, and whatever PKL in it, not even close. So charity, uh, communal harmony, pride and prestige. Uh, we said a boon to Indian athletics. Indians are making it to the Olympics in marathon and athletic disciplines. So my submission is somehow... This was not the genesis of a regular event and a promoter saying, we'll do an event and let's see what we can make from it. When I look back, I say that it was the genesis of a movement. And like you have correctly said today, that's what the Mumbai Marathon became. It became a movement for good, for health, fitness, charity, pride, prestige, communal harmony. It became a movement for that. And I think... You know, there are students watching this and I think it's important to set your objectives. Now, I'm not saying everybody should start thinking movements and not. Listen, all I'm saying is if you're doing an event, it's great. All events are great and we do events day in and day out. But have a larger aspect attached to your 
have some social good attached to your event have a social impact as an objective of your event you may achieve it in year 1 year 10 doesn't matter have an objective outside just the deliverables of the event and you will see the magic that you will do you know sushma we should realize the first license we get and we're all in the licensing game we have to chase hundreds of licenses every day but the first license we get is the license from society to exist we should not be ungrateful and unmindful of that that's a license that society gives saying listen you're going to start a business you're going to start an enterprise we hope you prosper but we also hope along the way society prospers because of you whether it's to half a percent 1% 100% doesn't matter so my submission to people who are thinking of events whether entertainment whether sport whether music whether theater whether arts it doesn't matter think of all the deliverables that you need to bring to the table and then add a couple of layers which are subliminal which which will do nothing but benefit society you know if it's art benefit artisans who are up and coming benefit the underprivileged through art whatever you have chosen medium may be art or sport and i think that has made a lot of difference to the event to the movement and to our lives Wow, very well said. I I love the pillar. I love the concept of pillar because you had clarity, like you said, there were seeds. Yet this, there was seed of clarity. And uh, sorry, I got so excited, my earphone has fallen off. I have, and uh, <laughs> that being said, when you have that clarity and you went out, I know you for two years uh, or three years, you were literally like on foot, going from office to office to office, getting sponsorship. And this I'm asking, especially because a lot of our students. who are here are entrepreneurs yeah uh, like uh, you can see shanu over here uh, so is anki and atunu they are all aspiring entrepreneurs now that being said it is a uphill task right to get sponsors number one you have a vision yet you've got to get somebody to buy into your vision so what would you say would be your secret ingredient i mean first you had one set of corporate sponsors then you had another set so could you share with our students what is the secret ingredient to actually sell i would not like to use the word enroll somebody in your vision you know let me tell you a story which will help to get this out more clearly so we actually started in 1999 but going with our bag and pages of presentation and painting oh. picture of a marathon and saying it's a panacea for society's evil saying it'll get people fit it'll get people to come out there and join it'll get people connected with their city it'll get charity and everybody thought we were cuckoo in 2000 we find a multinational ready to back us and that's a very big thing and that multinational is very well known so i'm not going to take a name but it was very well known and takes so the multinational calls us and says we love what you're doing and we think it's going to be phenomenal so hats off to them for that vision then they said a but they said this vision of yours is very large we have to work our way to that So we start with a local national event for a few years, and then we take it international to the vision that Anil and you have. Why not? Let's do it. We think it's fabulous. And you know, Sushma, that made a lot of sense to a certain right brain activity, but the left brain and the heart were completely disjointed. We said, "What do you mean by start local and national?" They said, "Listen, you don't worry. We are a multinational. You know, you know who we are." let us start at point a and then get to point z you are wanting to start at point z and that's when it comes down to the promoter's gut and anil and me made that call that if we start at point a there will be never a point z correct exactly. there will never be a point z in 100 years because it's just not going to it's when you do certain things that are supposed to be done in a certain way that it shocks it's it shocks everybody into out of their stupor out of their apathy out of their mindset which they normally have and you suddenly see that the life has changed and we said no and they couldn't believe it they said you're saying no to us we said we are saying no to you because either we start from point z and change the way people think about running 
or we will never reach point Z. So to answer your question, we stay true to the founding principle of bringing an international event to India, which would change the way Indians spent their recreation time. At that time in the country, there were exactly two and a half events. One Pune, one somewhere in Delhi, and one, one actually two and a half events. There was no running culture. There were 30, if I had to be generous, there were 30,000 runners in India. If I had to be generous. Wow. In 2019, in 2020, January, before the pandemic, we had 2.2 million registered runners. And the two and a half events had gone to 1,500 promoted events in India by hundreds of promoters. So that transformation came because when people saw the first Mumbai marathon with thousands of people running, the governor, the chief minister, two helicopters in the air, road shut, it changed people's perspective how things could be done. You know, very little uh, people understand, but the things that came after it, 2004 was Mumbai, then 2008 was IPL, then there was uh, ISL and PK. It actually instilled a can-do, will-do spirit in India. Because the first question was, who did Mumbai Marathon? Who shut these roads? So they would say, Anil and Vivek Singh, who are they? They're really nobodies. We had no political parents, so we had no great deep pockets. We were just two entrepreneurs with a dream and a vision. And that creates a can-do, will-do spirit. So then it is like, okay, so that means I can also do it. So the Mumbai Marathon transformed the landscape of participative sport in India, which was virtually non-existent, but it also gave people the can-do, will-do power to actually say, hey, okay, if they can do that, we can do this. So to get sponsors, it's a very tough grind. And it's tougher if you want to hold on to some vision and dream and principles you have. You have to really believe that this is something that you're doing has a larger canvas to play on. Otherwise, why would I not start and listen to what, that's, what that multinational was saying? Start at X, go to Y, go to Z. But there is no Y and Z sometimes unless you start the X correctly. So yeah, and then we are fortunate that Standard Chartered Bank backed us, had the same vision. And that's how the Standard Chartered Mumbai Marathon was born in 2004. Wow. And the fact is that, uh, you know, uh, you, because I, I, when you were talking, I just realized it's because it started at Z, at Z, is why it became a movement. If it started at A, it may have, we don't know. Uh, oh, uh, the jury's out there. They have fizzled out and people have said, oh, I, it's not me. And there was first, a lot of aspiration. Aspiration yeah. was created. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Not just aspiration, the way we made it inclusive. You know, we said yeah. Yeah, in the first few campaigns for the first few years was me Mumbaikar, me marathoner. And we told people that you are running a marathon every day of your life just to come from home to your place of work and to make it back home is a marathon in India. In many cities, that's a marathon. We said you're running a marathon for life. We want to showcase you with a sporting lens called the Mumbai International Marathon. And people got it. So the campaign which worked like wildfire was me, Mumbai kar me, marathon. It makes no sense. <laughs> it appealed to people's heart that, yeah, you know what, boss, I'm running a marathon every day in any case. Getting in that train, getting out of the train, going to work, coming back in that train, reaching home is a marathon in my life. Absolutely. <laughs> so it kind of connected. So it connected. It said, me Mumbai, me marathoner. It connected. It got people going. They said, I can take part. You know, it's, it's something fascinating how a movement is born. It, can, it should be studied because there are so many different facets. I remember Jay, Jay Walter Thompson did a you know, did a whole study on it in the sense that they said, what drove people to participate? And we all thought, you know, health and fitness would be 60 and 70%. Health and fitness was 6 or 7%. Oh. 93% was, it's my event in my city, I should do something. 
Some were, I am walking and running with Ani Lambani. Some said, who can walk in the middle of Marine Drive during the day? People have their own reasons and that is beautiful. Today, of course, it's become much more, it's seeded the health and fitness revolution. But a true movement is something that transcends its boundaries. And the Mumbai Marathon transcended the boundary of just timing and running. It has become a charity crucible. It's become something that you connect with your city on. It's become something where you come out and show your communal harmony. Today we have the wheelchair event. We have the senior citizens event. There's so many different facets to it. And, and it's beautiful because it creates, an, it, uh, the, it creates community, yet also inclusive community. And those, let me tell you, uh, as an onlooker as well, those who don't even participate, uh, it actually influences them as well positively. And that is the beauty that I really, uh, I, I can really talk about. Uh, I want to ask you one thing, okay? Because uh, this has come in a DM, a question. So I'm going to ask it to you any which way. And that is, uh, this is a, an unprecedented event. Nobody has done something like that in India before, in the country. I'm sure both you and Anil didn't know enough to actually logistically manage a mammoth event such as this. So what was the back end? First of all, as learners, how are you thinking? How did you hire the right people? How did you know they were the right people? First of all, because there was nothing like that that ever happened. And uh, what about the processes? So a little bit about the logistic and the process aspect would be interesting for everyone who's here. So marathon is the only event where you need the entire state and city machinery to participate. You can have as much back end as you like. It's got, it can't deliver. Right. So our, one of our biggest challenges was mindset challenge. So get the city authorities, municipal corporation, the Mumbai police, the Mumbai railways, the airport authorities of India, the DGPA to cooperate to actually do this event. And that's a challenge in itself when they have not seen success. Today, they've all seen success. So yes, the word works like magic. So actually, a lot of our time and energy went in getting these partners and stakeholders involved. And that's when the government of Maharashtra really came and put its foot down and made it happen. We could not have done it. So I feel that two, three things that we did, I would like to share with you all, you and your, and your students. One, we invested time and energy in getting the right air cover from the government of Maharashtra to the government of India, to the municipal corporation, to the Mumbai police, to the Western Railway, Central Railway. We got that air cover. The second thing we actually did was convince people that this is something larger than us. Don't do it for us. The Mumbai Marathon belongs to India. Do it for India. And somehow people started seeing that, that there is something larger good in this. And that's how we actually were doing it and still do it. And I think the other aspect that we actually uh, uh, you know, went into is that we went to partners that had a role to play. Very few people know this, Sushma. We went to DHL and said, logistics is your problem. Please help. Right. We went to different, different water to logistics, to we went to the Oberoi Hotel and said, hospitality is your problem. So we had partners, apart from the air cover of government agencies and para-government agencies and administrative authorities, we made sure we got partners who had roles to deliver. So Oberoi did a fabulous job on how benefited the event. DHL did a fabulous job on logistics, benefited the event. Asian Heart Institute did a fabulous job on medical, benefited the event. If you actually go to the par, you will see that each so we I had a team of some 2,000 people working and maybe wow. 200 employed by ProCam. Wow. So the partners we chose, the air cover we chose, that really helped deliver Mumbai Marathon. So it is about partnerships. It's not only about, I can do it all. I think that is a critical mistake that most entrepreneurs do. I have to do everything, I have to do it's about reaching out and getting the right partnerships, getting the right team. And how did you manage to get your internal team, as in the ones who were coordinating with all the partners? Because I'm sure there was no know-how that existed back then. I'm, I'm uh, hoping to get a sense of 
How do you create something when nothing exists? In well, the country, at least. So we had been in sport for 15 years before yes. that. that so we knew the sporting ecosystem. But I remember a lot of it from HR college to KC college to National Institute of Event Management. A lot of people gave us a lot of volunteer support. And yes, we were familiar with the sporting ecosystem. So we pulled in people from different walks of life and to form a core team. But I would still say it's the air cover and the partners that really helped us to deliver the event in such a large scale. Wow. Amazing. Uh, that's an interesting insight because I've never got this before from anyone. I must tell you, Vivek, that, uh, you know, it's about having valuable partnerships with the right people. And a lot of it, you're not seeing it, yet I can read between the lines. Is, uh, it was partnership of trust as well. Because when there's trust and uh, everyone had ownership of the brand. Yes. So that is a, specific, a particular aspect that makes a partnership work. Well said, Sushma, but then you have to have a strategic fit. I'll explain that to you for with one example. We told DHL we want you to partner. They loved it. We said, you're not just going to partner. You're going to be responsible for logistics on race day. To a certain extent, of course, we did the back-end logistics is ours. So what happens is their reputation is tied in. Now DHL ain't going to let you down. Correct. Obra in letting you down on hospital radiation heart in letting you down on medical. Very and I can go through the entire list like that. So what we did was, like you correctly said, created ownership with our partners and let them play their strengths. DHL okay. will stand on its head to make sure logistics happens right because their name is associated. So we didn't go to partners and say, oh, come in. And we said, this is your space. And for years, DHL used that in their marketing campaign. We deliver Mumbai Marathon. Partly right, partly whatever it may be. God bless them. But they were right because they helped. Correct. Correct. It, it makes a big difference. <laughs> the ownership coupled with a strategic throughput of bringing partners and brands and connecting them with a the space that they can own. Wow. I'm loving it. I mean, for those of you who are really looking at creating um, events which will change uh, the dimension of India, I think you know it's time for you to start making notes and write these things down because these are critical pieces of information that nobody really tells you. So students, uh, while I'm at it, you uh, please feel free to put in your questions in the chat as well so everyone can see it. I'm getting a few on the DMs, but yet it'll be nice if you can share it gets a lot of energy in this space. I'm coming to the next aspect, uh, Vivek. According to you, uh, so like you said, government has been a very important aspect. Government machinery, uh, uh, state governments, and sometimes it may, may be central also, I don't know. How do you deal with it? How have you figured out a way to actually connect to deal, to get your perspective through? It is always an uphill task, I understand that. But can you share some secrets on how you have managed to deal with the government because this is being asked by one of my students who's running a, a, a marathon. He says small marathon in a small city. I don't think anything is small. So <laughs> this is his question. Yes, it is a challenge. So I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to, you know, make it lighter than it is. But it is, you know, you'll, you'll find good people who connect with you at a concept level. We had to find that connect with certain people in government who then championed your cause. My submission is, I think many times promoters take a, how do I say this in the right way, Sushma? They want to treat government as a, you know, something that I have to deal with, but the less I deal with, the better, and the faster I get out of that government office, the best. That ain't going to work. I'm sorry, but if you don't willing to put the grind, the time, the effort in it, go there, explain, 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 make them feel like your partners, invite them for the right events, showcase them. How do I explain this, you know, to get the students... They are going to, if you're running a participative event like a mad, they're going to be your stake, biggest stakeholder for life. They're not something that you have to deal with. 
it's a pain i have to deal with it i have to get five permissions i might as well if that is your attitude then you're going to struggle forever if your attitude is whether they are a pain or not i don't know but they are my biggest stakeholders and they're going to remain my biggest stakeholders for life you will deal with those stakeholders differently and so i would actually go to very very core aspects for your students sushma it's the attitude with which they treat government and authorities the authorities are treated like a pain they treat it like okay i have to get the permission now whatever i have to do to get the permission to help with it then it's going to be a pain for you but if you say why should it be a pain why can't they see what good i'm doing why can't they then somehow that why finally translates into them coming on board we never treated government as an outside as an outsider or as somebody that we just had to get something from and we showcased and the more government stood up and waved and said things we we amplified it even more they couldn't believe it they said i can't believe this event procam has done everything and look at the glory we are getting we said you take more glory correct god bless you correct and every step of the way we carried them so you know it's a i don't know how to say this i uh, i'd like to say this in the way that the students can benefit identify your biggest stakeholders and put in that time and energy to make them your lifelong partners it's very easy for us to make government a step partner whom we just have to deal with because there's no choice in this country then you will approach it in a different way i like that so the the, the mindset actually creates a reality the mindset yes. is that, uh, you know uh, one of partnership one of yes. uh, uh, ownership let's do this together automatically i think the affinity yes. is created right if i'm not mistaken wow yes. a uh, very uh, nice very insightful for us for me as well uh, uh, your perspective because i deal a lot like you you are aware <laughs> a lot uh, with uh, various governments and uh, it's uh, and i think it has really worked with me because now no matter what they want littlest thing they will pick up the phone and ask because yeah. you know there is an entire thing how we are friends and we are in it together and we have to be yes. the what's best for our city. that's how it is sushma they're going to be your biggest stakeholder whether you like it or not so <laughs> there's no <laughs> option <laughs> so i want to know before there are some questions coming in there's one more very important point i'd like to touch upon i uh, ask you before we get into the questions and that is uh, tourism now i know i know the figures because you've shared them with me yet it'd be wonderful if you could uh, share the figures or share your perspective of how a sporting event like the one we do that we as in you do that is a tata marathon i also become the owner of it uh, is how does it really shift the narrative of tourism for a city or a country secondly is it important to have that vision at the outset that we're going to shift the narrative for my city for my country uh by driving tourism into the country so if you can give us your input on tourism and how we can become Uh, an integral part of uh, shifting uh, you know the economy of the state as well drastically gets um, positively impacted by an event of this nature so if you could give us a couple of data points and share with the students uh, all the not all the data points but the impact that you've shared with me so sushma let's get to the core you mentioned tourism but that is something which is an external aspect Correct. the board is a word that you use called narrative and that's something we harped upon from day one that the mumbai marathon will change the narrative of what people think about mumbai and india tourism will be a good fall out of it wow. said, what do you mean what is all this english you'll come and talk here narrative this that there we said you watch when people for a marathon to happen approximately 17 different administrative agencies need to work together otherwise it can't happen the moment a marathon happens means there is cooperation all around there is communal harmony there is safety there is security for women we said one mumbai marathon will tick your narrative on several boxes sir tourism will be a good fall out of it the narrative it will tick is safety security coordination the narrative it will think is that people are got a healthy and sporting mindset 
The narrative it will take is the administration has a healthy and sporting mindset. The narrative it will take is that there is youthfulness in the city. I said that's the narrative you want for Mumbai. So when I connected people to a higher cause called narrative, 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 tourism and hundred other things are a natural fallout. In two thousand nine, we did a study, and now that that Mumbai Marathon had a two hundred crore economic impact in in Mumbai. So in that now figure would have probably gone up. But my point is, you're right. The movements are about narratives. and we why do you think we had you know i i remember sushma in 2004 when the mumbai marathon happened there must have been five four or five marathons in the world which had live telecast because to live telecast a marathon is a marathon in itself i have a 200 man team working on nothing but live telecast every piece of equipment i had to import we imported tons of equipment wow. just to get a marathon live telecast there's no such equipment in india because it's not a captive venue i have 42 kilometers of road and i need rf signals of helicopters so why did we do that we said if we do not showcase what we are doing to the world then what narrative am i changing correct so everywhere we were true to our speak we said you will see the narrative you will see a change and we will showcase that change on live television across the pan asian footprint excellent and so yes we did connect people the fact that you will change the narrative this event changes the narrative this event shows security safety coordination youthfulness and not only does it show it we will amplify that with all our media partners So year one, we had Star TV and all these big boys carrying us and actually showcasing this to the Pan Asian footprint. So I would like to say tourism and others are fallout, but yes, it's important to showcase the narrative, connect the government authorities and people with it, and then amplify it. Not just sit and say you did it, but how is that amplified for the world to see? And the pictures that we sent out from Mumbai were just amazing. pictures of marine drive with people and the cst which is a world heritage unesco site with people at the start and finish it was just something incredible people didn't couldn't imagine mumbai like this exhilarating and and it actually shifted if we use the word it actually shifted the narrative from a, a, a city i mean it optimized the city for god sake you know it's such a lively it, it If I forget optimizing, I think it re- the marathon <laughs> reflected the city, the spirit of uh, Mumbai. Actually, reflected it because it is an international spirit, and it kind of reflected it perfectly. So uh, that being said, you know, I also want to focus on the various aspects that an event like this really, um, let me say, attracts or becomes a magnet for. Uh, I'm sorry, there's a little bit of uh, conversation in the background here uh, between my mates. Uh, it attracts people to come in there is travel there is local travel uh there are uh, there is accommodation that is uh, uh you know because so many people are coming into the city there's accommodation there are even little things like food and beverage all this kind of it really impacts the economy so is it important uh, we'll be coming to my next question like if you uh, uh, there is this question so maybe This could be one of the answers to the question. So Atanu has asked, uh, "Ma'am, what will the profit of the government be? How will they be convinced about an event like West Bengal is uh, a government which is very difficult to convince? How do we approach them in the context of benefit?" So uh, Vivek would. Uh, so Atanu is looking at doing something on West Bengal. So how can he convince the government of West Bengal? that there is this event and they require to back the event so your inputs on yeah that it's a question atanu i don't know what are you looking at music art theater sport i don't know but fortunately we were in sport because the administrative authorities there love sport they are a very sporting inclined people and if you go to them with a sporting proposal it has a lot of merit i don't know if the same for theater and arts it may be but i found the administrative authorities in west bengal and calcutta specifically fabulous to deal with they lead from the front and they are i we had no issues so i don't know what it is you're going to government with i don't know how you're going to government 
but i can tell you sport works like magic in west bengal and if you show something whereby their populace that the people are getting benefited or the people are getting involved it's a great thing so you know we were lucky that we had the people involvement to showcase we had sport as our platform and 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 your home and so true we've done eight years of calcutta it's been incredible i mean from a, uh, the east was completely in darkness even though the sun rises there first and i remember uh, atanu the first year of first two year we get calls you know and uh, we had a call center set up and all that and we get calls and saying this is a wonderful thing you all are doing we have heard of mumbai and you are now come to calcutta what a beautiful thing you all are doing you all are the best we be so happy man that somebody praising us in the first two years then they say so this 300 rupees you written on the form when will you give me you give me when i come there on to red road or you give me in advance so we were lost my call center had all the faqs but they had no answer for this they said sir they said no no you have printed form you have said 5 km 300 rupees so many kilometers when will you give me so we said sir i think you're referring to the entry fee and that's an entry fee you have to pay to participate what you bloody fool i am going to pay you to run who pays people to i we will get galis after that was how the mindset has changed and to tell you in 2019 december 15000 people paid and ran and that's because our ceiling was 15000 Uh-huh. when sushma talks about mindset changes that's how significant they have people insulting us and we want money to they said and then we realize in west bengal sushma people are paid to gather oh that's why that's where it and comes from you don't understand where are we getting these calls and like, what a wonderful person you are you are the best people you have come here but when will you pay me <laughs> they get paid to gather So if one more idiot has come from Mumbai, he will also pay us to gather. Normally they get paid fifty rupees. This idiot is paying three hundred rupees. <laughs> and when we told him that he had to pay to run, he so went on an entire mother and father also. <laughs> so interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. And we were shocked. We said because in, we had done Delhi, Bangalore, Bombay by then. We said we've not got that because then we are they paid they are, they are used to getting paid to gather at places. And how did it how did it evolve then? How did it work out then finally? People saw what we were doing. People saw and appreciate, and we got the best ambassadors, the best runners, live television telecast. So that's when things changed. People said, "Okay, there is something happening." Wow, lovely. So coming to the next question, uh, uh, which I have before that, Shanu has posted a question here. Uh, Singh sir, how much time does it does a new IP like Mumbai Marathon take to break even? Break even. <laughs> It's a good question. You know, the first three years we lost money. There's no question. We lost money. We lost our own money because the way we wanted to do it, and the funds we could raise and sponsorship did not marry. There are two options: one, we compromise on the way we want to do it, or the second, we bite the bullet. So we chose the second and bit the bullet. It's only when the renewals of contract happened till we start seeing money. So that took about three to five years, to be honest. Because by the time also the brand was built, yes, impact yes. was felt. So it is also not only about breaking even; it is about working simultaneously. You're creating yeah. the brand. Yeah. You're giving value. and that's if you do these two automatically you, you more than break even yes but it uh, yeah yeah now it the horizon is increased no uh, uh, the rate of breaking even has come to about uh, depending on each uh, obviously on uh, different things that i've heard a lot about it takes 5 years etc people talk in the hallways i would not know so i just wanted to ask you is there a formula to break even it takes time it takes 3 to 5 years to actually start seeing money if you're doing a large movement unless you're 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 lucky and you get the right sponsors but most of the time the promoter's vision and passion exceeds the inflow that's what happens <laughs> yeah that that because of, <laughs> i agree <laughs> it just is uh, it's a it's something that you nurture like your own child and it's something that yes, yes. Uh, you you want like first the child is crawling then you want the child to stand then yes. you want the child to run 
then yes. you want the child to freaking jump over hoops. I yes. don't know what. So I think it's all about uh, what is your vision and you take the child and you do the best you possibly and, you can. Know, that's an important point, Sushma, because you need to make up your mind whether you want to be an organizer in a particular event or a mm-hmm. promoter. Hmm. There's a big difference. People use these words very lightly. Oh, I'm a promoter. I'm an organizer. Because a promoter carries inherent risks. And you have to be prepared to carry those inherent risks before you can call yourself a promoter. The risks of time, reputation, energy, money. Or you be an organizer and charge a fee. Nothing wrong with it. But be clear. If you are going to be a promoter, then there are inherent risks that come with it. Or you're an organizer and you can charge a fee. So my submission to the students is be clear as to what you, what is your vision on the event? What do you hope to achieve? Are you a promoter of the event? Are you an organizer of the event? Each one has its own risks and buckets. And, uh, that's a very valid point, uh, Vivek. I have one more, uh, qu- a couple of more questions. Sorry to keep you. Uh, guys, keep posting your questions. Now, you know, earlier you were talking about uh, brand ambassadors. I'm going to go into that. Uh, I was actually scratching my head and saying there is no one face that I can attach as the brand ambassador for Tata Marathon, which is now Tata Marathon, right? So was that done consciously? There were many faces, mind you. Every year, there were a bundle of uh, 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 different people who were there right at the beginning to signal the run and I, I don't know what the actual terminology for that is. And there were a whole bunch of people, but I have never seen a face plaster. So uh, there is this whole concept today that exists that you need a brand ambassador uh, to create a brand. I would like your thoughts on that, especially for a sporting event. You could give, give us your thoughts. Uh, good question, Sushma, again. Um, it helps. So I can't sit there and you know, give any high-flying things to you. That, oh, leave it. But it does help to get a brand ambassador to promote a brand. No question about it, and we all do it. It's just that your brand or your product is finally bigger than anyone you get. And you have to build on that. So even if you get a very big mega star, just be sure he's there to amplify your product, your brand, your ethos, your value, and not the other way around. But yes, it does help. And I, you know, we, 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 we get, uh, and like right now, Tiger Shroff has been such a wonderful event ambassador for Mumbai Marathon. In the past, John Abraham was, some, was fabulous. He did for years, he was the face of the Mumbai Marathon. And they've all lent their weight, their credibility, their passion to it. But we were very clear, the Mumbai Marathon is bigger than any one person or any company or anything. That's why, right. so that's what I'm saying. I remember that there used to be people, but it does not, they don't become larger than the brand. And no. They only add value to the brand. Yes. So if you're looking at John, he was known to be fit and he was, uh, you know, one of the fittest ones in Bollywood. Now you're talking about Tiger, he's more than fit. Uh, yet it is, uh, and you, you've not, you've not stuck to one. You know, the, the point is that you've really shifted with what the times are, shifted with what is the uh, yeah. trend, is it? And they've given of themselves. They've given of themselves. They've been wonderful events. But, you know, we realize that the event is bigger than all of us. Correct. Correct. I think that is a, a lovely point. I'm coming on to the next one. We are literally on the hot seat. Okay. Uh, question is a, a little bit more deeper. See, you know, you were talking about uh, the wheelchair run and there is, I mean, I've seen people, uh, uh, you know, there, there's no bias or there's no cap on gender. There's no cap on uh, sexual orientation. Uh, on physical ability, any kind of physical ability. Now, did that happen from day one? Or was that something that kind of evolved? If it did evolve, how did it evolve? The inclusive aspect. You know, sometimes you need a little bit of a prod, you know, because promoters sometimes get... So when, so I remember 2004 went off brilliantly. And in 2005, Dutt Saab calls me, Sunil, the late Sri Sunil Dutt. He was the... Minister for Sports, Government of India. 
and that sub calls me actually and says you're doing a wonderful job you must include wheelchairs i immediately luckily had static as it sir lot of static on the line i cannot hear you clearly because the try the thought for a promoter to have wheelchairs on the roads of mumbai was something no promoter wants to deal with but that saab was some was a wonderful man and he said nothing doing you must be more inclusive and have wheelchair so i must say that the wheelchair inclusion was a prod from the late shri sunil dat and then once we included it it became some such a magical aspect of the marathon but to answer your question i think you keep pushing the boundaries of what you have achieved so for me inclusiveness is a very big thing so i keep pushing the boundaries so last year we tied up with uh, with uh, adventures beyond barriers foundation and we made sure that for the first time in the history of mumbai marathon people with disability could run with a person with an ability and complete 10 kilometers and we made sure that the people with ability whom we had 100 of so not one 100 were all cxos ceos chros ctos why because the person you ran with can you help him in in his life can you help him with a career a job or setting him up or something so we had 100 uh, disabled or in or challenged physically challenged people running with 100 physically able people and that changed 100 lives so today we are a huge platform for inclusion we keep pushing the boundaries out whether it's wheelchair whether it's people with other disabilities whether it's the senior citizens so i don't know whether i've answered the question but you know you said it sometime back sushma that your event is like your baby if it is like your baby and you truly believe that as a promoter then you'll keep looking at what else what more can you do okay. and then the answers will come automatically correct and sometimes they happen by accident and sometimes they happen by design <laughs> all these wonderful somebody, uh, somebody at the top gives you a little push and said you got nothing doing you got to have to be i said sir wheelchair event on these roads <laughs> you find a way <laughs> I, I, yeah yeah <laughs> did we find a way but i don't know whether you remember but in 2005 2006 he flew down to flag it off wow, wow. he was a wonderful man wonderful and man till, till today priya his daughter uh, mrs priya dat is involved and she comes for the flag off of the wheelchair event wow i, I he, he was a wonderful man i've had the honor of meeting him many times so many events and Of oh, a distinguished gentleman. That's the key term for him. That's Absolutely. the best That's term for him. <laughs> we lost him very early, Sushma. Yeah, too early. He made such a difference to all of us. Um, okay, there are other questions, so I'm going to go straight to it. Um, have you stuck to the same? Uh, this is from Chitra. Have you stuck to the same partners when it comes to outsourcing, or do you experiment every couple of years? Uh, I think what he means are vendors and suppliers. I think that's what he means in this yeah, case. Yeah, uh, Chitra, uh, she, uh, it's a lady. Uh, Chitra, do you mean vendors or do you mean sponsors? Uh, sponsor partners or do you need vendors? To clarify that uh, will be great. Uh, Chitra, you can can you unmute, darling? Oh no, you're not allowed to unmute. If you can, uh, if you can put it on the chat so we can both actually. She wants to know about sponsors as well as uh, vendor partners. so with both of the people you try and build long term relationships with partners for sure even with vendors and suppliers you try and build long term because that helps work you know things move very smoothly so i would encourage you to build long term relationships i would encourage you to build blueprints that they share with you and i would encourage you to make uh, now i'm not talking apart from talking vendor and suppliers I'm, i would encourage you make your vendors and suppliers partners to your success and if they feel the ownership they will bend backwards to support the event and yes without compromising on the commercials there is a way to build a part a, a, a vendor supplier relationship into a partnership for the good of the event so there is a way yes i will unmute okay uh, another question uh, i told you that they'll have many questions another question 
uh, from Shanu. Uh, this is a question he's asking whether it is a good idea for him, you know. Is, will someone like a trans, will something like a transgender run make sense, especially given the taboo attached uh, to the LGBTQ company, uh, community? I hope you heard me with everyone has decided to converge in the same room at the same time, opening all the doors in my house open at the same time. I hope you heard me. So to answer the question, absolutely. It's just that right now the numbers are very small for us to include a category, but not at all close to it. Absolutely, it's inclusive. And your choice of sexual orientation is your choice. We welcome it. It's just that right now the numbers are too small for us to create a category called transgender, LGBTQ, whatever. So short answer, as if that number grows, happy to have a category and happy to be more inclusive. Guys, do post some more questions while you're at it. So uh, I, I have, have a, a little bit of a deadline. I'll need to go off in a few yeah. minutes. We're closing in three minutes. So if there is any other question. So towards now to close, uh, let me ask you, Vivek, uh, since there is nothing else, I think everyone's asked. Uh, Vivek, what is your advice to all our students? And uh, when I say advice, I'm saying, what are the three things that you think they should do for their careers? Like three specific things for them in their career in event management and experiential management. What are the three things they must do? Okay, so I, 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 I'll spend a few minutes on this. I think events and experience management is not just the present, it's the future. Your economy is growing from an information economy into a knowledge economy, into an experience economy. So events are going to grow and grow, whether they are music, art, theater, sports, they're going to grow because people are going to look for experiences. People are going to be willing to pay for experiences. Don't get sucked in that everything is going virtual. Virtual will be a great complement to what the physical aspect of this world is. It ain't going anywhere. If you are considering sport as one paradigm of yours, then participative sport is going to grow faster than spectator sport. There are two paradigms in the world of sports, spectator sport, participative sport. Participative sport is going, even spectator sport is growing huge, but participative sport, I see a much more headroom. You have to be true to yourself and you should ask people like Sushma, who you have, you know, it's wonderful. You have these people who have been at the forefront of this industry. It's not easy being an event organizer or event promoter. It's not for everybody. And there's no, nothing wrong if it's not for you. Just be true to yourself. It's a very hard line. It's less glamorous than it looks from outside. But it is very satisfying when you get the event or the experience right. It is very satisfying. You are able to change mindsets. You are harbingers of change. So I would, in, I would encourage you that if you are in it for the right reasons of creating experiences, creating new paradigms, creating social impact, creating... Something happened and we continue. Sorry, uh, Vivek. Yeah, Vivek, continue. Creating social change, uh -huh. this is the right right field you're in because it's going to grow. The experience economy has just started a few years ago. It's going to grow for several years. So it is tough. It requires you to be diligent. It requires you to be persuasive. It requires you to be a visionary. This job of being an event manager, event promoter requires you to be a few things at one time, which all industries don't. But this, you've got to be a persuasive salesman. You've got to be diligent with your work. You've got to have the ability to be hands-on and get your hands dirty. You've got to be a few things to be an event organizer and event promoter. And you have to ask yourself, am I that? You, know, you could be somebody who doesn't like to get their hands dirty. So your answer will be, oh, it's okay, I'll hire somebody. That's not the right answer. This business is such that you may have to get your hands dirty and you should be willing to. So I would think, I would say it's the future for sure. I would say there is so much more in the experience economy to come. 
I feel that once this pandemic is over, live events and the experiential economy is going to grow multifold. We are going to come back stronger. I know how much we've been hurt. I know how much we have struggled. It's been a very tough 15, 16 months. But if you are able to hang in there, I believe live events will come. And one last thought I'd like to leave you all with. You know, we were children of the Jugaad generation, which means kuch bhi karna hai, kaise bhi karna hai. You know, today we have a company that's of a certain size and Jugaad is a good beginning. Do not depend on Jugaad as a system. People in India have this thing, Are Jugaad is a part of our life and we've all done Jugaad and still do. But you have to keep having systems, disciplines, technology at your service. Jugaad is your entry point. In every aspect, you start with Jugaad, then you move forward to system. If you do not move forward to system, you cannot grow. Somehow I've got this feeling, Sushma, I don't know whether Sushma agrees or not, that it's so cool to be Jugadu in the events business that you can be Jugadu for the rest of your life. Yes and no. Please be a Jugadu because without a Juga you can't. But that's just your entry point. Then you've got to systematize it, professionalize it, get systems and move on to the next. If you stick with a Juga every year, it's not happening. So I would request you all to be structured, disciplined, system-oriented, using technology as your aid and letting Jugaad be a natural extension of your innovativeness rather than a way of life and rather than a, a system. I, I, <laughs> I love the way you said Jugaad. Let's call it, the new word is hustling. <laughs> So that's a brand new word. Uh, I think it's uh, really uh, important. Uh, the, the advice you've given is extremely important. I completely agree with everything. And also I'd like to add that today, everything is down to a system. Everything is down to a process. Uh, so have a hustler mindset. Yeah, do it with integrity. Uh, do it with honor. And do it uh, being just to all partners so that you're not doing something at the cost of somebody else. I think as long as you're doing that and you're true to yourself, you're rocking. <laughs> Right. So that being said, I want to say a big thank you, Vivek, on behalf of Jagran Lake City, as well as uh, Wistrop Mind and the uh, Jagran Wistrop Mind School of uh, Events and Education. A big thank you. I want to also say a big thank you to MESC. Uh, MESC has been supporting us uh, on this entire uh, Explore series. And a big thank you to the MESC team for being with us. And Vivek, your closing words before we call it a day. Um, any last words? Yeah, I just like to tell these guys, you're so lucky you have people, you have leaders like Wiscraft to help your journey. We didn't have anybody to guide us. Take advantage of that. Talk to your peers. These are the kind of courses you must have enrolled in, which are fabulous. So you're very lucky today. There's so much more knowledge out there. There's so much more structure out there. There's so much more intellect out there that you can use. Use it. From form partnerships, form collaborations, and actually use that intellect to propel yourselves further. We actually had to learn a lot the hard way and by making mistakes. And uh, I think there's a lot more systems and intellect and knowledge there which you can easily access to propel yourselves even faster. Do that. Be grateful. You know, uh, every successful event, and our uh, program has done a number of them, but we're just grateful when some things fall into place because, you know, I, I feel that an attitude of gratitude is the most precious thing one can have. So don't lose that attitude of gratitude. You are all event managers or wanting to be event managers. You're bold, you're audacious, you're innovative, which is great and I really wish you guys and girls and transgenders and whoever else is on this call absolute godspeed and good luck thank you so much Vivek and students a big thank you I hope you found this uh, exciting and please put on chat so we know you're all here you're listening 
Thank you, Vivek, once again. A big God bless on behalf of Sabas as well. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. It stopped streaming. Okay, guys. So I'm going to see you all tomorrow. A few of you tomorrow. And the rest of you, we're doing a simulation, okay, on Sunday, next Sunday. So please be there for the simulation. Thank you, Atanu. Thank you, Chetna. Thank you, Chitral. Please don't miss your sessions. Huh? Uh, Sunday, uh, PO Sir is doing something very important, uh, which is excellent.